What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Planetary Reviews and I am here to talk about one of my favorite shows of all time, my favorite anime ever, made my childhood, Dragon Ball Z. Since Dragon Ball Fighters is coming out this month, I figured let's make a little bit of a Dragon Ball theme. Let's talk about it and let's talk about why I love it. And so many of us, there's millions of fans out there who grew up watching Toonami, which is the number one reason why I even got into Dragon Ball. If it wasn't for Toonami, I probably wouldn't know what they were, which I'm very thankful for because this series has shaped who I am today, how I view life, the way, how, how I like to like live my everyday life because the characters in this show really made an impact on me and I love this show so much. So I wanted to do, I'm not going to review every season, I'm not going to review every saga, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to review, discuss, and talk about DBZ as a whole. So let's get started. One of the first things that I love about this show so much are the characters. The characters to this show are amazing. Obviously we have Goku, we have Vegeta, we have Gohan, we have Piccolo. Every single character about this show was always compelling. Even people like Yamcha and Krillin, those are people who hate on them. I always loved them either way. I've always loved the attitude of Yamcha ever since he, he was introduced in Dragon Ball. He has a great attitude. He was a really cool character with a really cool fighting style. It just sucks that he had to die by Cybermen the way he did. And ever since then, people won't let him let him let him just live it through. But he is still a cool character. Krillin, as much as people give him crap, he is still one of the coolest characters. Because even though he knows he is gonna outright lose most of the time, he still goes out there and he still goes and fights to the very end. And I gotta give him credit for that. I love his character for that reason. And Tien, I mean, come on. How could you not love Tien? Tien is a badass, especially when he fought Nappa after he saw Chao Tzu sacrifice, him, sacrifice himself and he just boom, blast him with all of his energy. He may not have won, but that was an extremely badass part on hit on him um, of the show in the early season of Dragon Ball when the Saiyans arrived. That was insane. And Piccolo, I love this character arc. He started off evil in Dragon Ball. And then he just slowly learned what it was like to be a good person, to have a friend when it was when he had Gohan, he was training him early in the show. And then his character evolved even more as the show went on. Yeah, by the end in, Majin, in the Majin Buu saga, he kind of really didn't have too many big moments. He really was just there to say how powerful people were and just teach Goten and Trunks how to do the fusion dance. But you know what? He's, there, it was still fun to see him. The Majin Buu saga may have had some issues, but overall, I still love that saga. It was still fun. It was still a very interesting time. But let's talk about Goku and Vegeta. These are the two big ones. The two and Trunks, obviously. I'm going to talk about him too because he's another one of my favorites. But Goku and Vegeta were a huge part of my life because Goku was just the embodiment of innocence. He was just so innocent. He just wanted the fight to get better. He never wanted to hurt anyone. And and he just always loved life. He loved his kids. And yes, I know you're going to say, oh, but he died and he just kept on leaving them and stuff like that. But you know what? I think he still cared about his kids. And I love them for that. He just always wanted the fight to be able to protect the earth and get stronger. I loved him. He was an amazing character. Seeing Goku go from where he was in the Saiyan Saga beating Vegeta, going all, all, well, not beating Vegeta, we all know that fight kind of just elongated and multiple people had to help to beat him, but you know what? He went through Vegeta, then he fought Frieza, and just seeing him become a Super Saiyan for the first time was insane. That was nuts. I was not expecting that in any way, shape, or form. So when he turned Super Saiyan, it was one of the most epic times of my childhood. Extremely awesome seeing the his hair, golden and then you see the aura and freezes the cinder like what did he just do saiyans only turn into apes one of the craziest transformations ever and then we got trunks when he got introduced in the beginning of the android saga this dude was a badass when he came out with his sword and just took out frieza i was like dude this dude is insane this guy's awesome he's got the cool jacket he's got cool hair he's got the sword and when you find out that he's vegeta's son one of the coolest plot twists ever. I was like, what? Who'd he end up with? And then you sit there and you realize that it's Bulma's son. I was just like, what? There were just so many good twists and turns there. And then I got to talk about the art style because this is an art style that I really loved. It was like before anime turned into more digital kind of artwork, 
we had this like really beautiful hand drawn look to it. You can tell that somebody sat down, and drew everything, and it was done by hand for the most part. And that's why I love the art style of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. It looked amazing. I always loved the aesthetic of the show. It looked beautiful. And then we got to talk about when you think about when you think about Dragon Ball Z. You got to talk about Bruce. I, I forgot his last name. I'm sorry, but the music in Dragon Ball Z, the English version is just extremely intense. When an action scene goes down, when a power-up scene goes down, that music got you hyped. You were always hyped for the fighting. And then when the action itself went down, nothing could top DBZ at the time. Nothing could top that action. But they would be teleporting all over the place. They would be fighting. It was insane. That entire fight between Goku and Frieza was probably one of the most amazing fights in like anime history until this day for me. Seeing them just blasting through Namek, granted Frieza was sitting there like, I'm gonna destroy Namek, yeah, five minutes. 30 episodes later, it starts to blow up. That was funny, but <laughs> when, when, when you see that fight, DBZ was so famous for the having huge, awesome energy blasts, just having these insanely world-destroying battles, it was incredible. Something that I'd never seen as a kid, and that really got me just going, whoa, there are shows like this? This is incredible. Man, and then when he had that beautiful arc with Gohan, oh, Gohan's arc, I gotta say, was really well done. In the beginning, he was just a weak kid that wanted to just go to school and everything, but then, as we get to the Android saga, he became more like his dad a little bit. He became a fighter, became a warrior. He realized that he had to fight to protect the people that he loves. And that moment when he's fighting Perfect Cell and he goes Super Saiyan 2 is etched in my mind also. One of Gohan's most amazing moments. When he went Super Saiyan 2, I was like, dude, this is insane. Finally, we get to see this badass of a kid fight Perfect Cell and beat him. Because, man, the, the transformations in this show, because it wasn't only the Super Saiyan and the Super Saiyan 2 transformation that were great. We had so many different ones. We had the one when Trunks went Super Saiyan for the first time, when he saw future Gohan die from the androids. That was an insane transformation. The, <laughs> the famous Super Saiyan 3 transformation from Goku when he was showing Boo all the levels of Super Saiyan. That was insane. That was like yelling times a million. And it was incredible. I was like, dude, what's gonna happen? What is he gonna turn into? And you see his hair grow. Granted, I just don't like the no eyebrows. But it's whatever. But it was still awesome when he puts himself that far and you're just like, holy crap, there is a Super Saiyan 3 now? Damn. That was incredible. And then also, I gotta talk about one of my, one of, one of, I'm sure many of you love this character as well. Vegeta. Vegeta is an incredible character. I wish he had some more awesome moments, but that just doesn't seem to happen all too often, unfortunately. But Vegeta was incredible. He started off as an evil, evil Saiyan, working for Frieza, and then he slowly arcs to being a good guy. You never truly know if he's a good guy. For most of the show, even in the Cell Saga, you're like, yeah, he's fighting for us, but he's only doing it because he lives here now. He doesn't truly care about the Earth. It isn't until we get to the Boo Saga, after he goes Majin, and when he gets revived and he starts fighting Boo, Kid Boo, that we really see a huge, beautiful character arc. He starts from a evil guy to a person who learns to adapt to the way we live he finds people that he cares about you might not admit it but he cares about Bulma he cares about Trunks and then he even starts to care about Goku no matter what he says he cares about that guy that's one of he's one of the only other full-blooded Saiyans left in the show with him so deep down he does care about him so after seeing him go through all this and then sacrificing himself even when he has um, Bobbity's magic under him He's still able to sacrifice himself to protect everyone. Granted, does he does he end up destroying Boo? No. But that was an amazing arc. When I just looking at his entire story and seeing the where he was by the end of the Boo saga was beautiful. I loved it. He had so he had some good moments too though. He might not have defeated anyone truly amazing, but he had amazing moments. We cannot forget the very first time we saw his final flash. That was insane. When I first saw him do that, and Cell was just standing in front of him. He just he was like, this is nothing. I got this. And then he just goes, stand right there. And then he just screams, final flash. The, the, the beam goes straight at Cell. And even at that moment, Cell was scared. He was like, oh crap. We all, we all remember it. His eyes widened. He was like, shit. 
and then boom, it hit him, and he was actually able to damage Cell, something no one was able to do throughout that entire little battle. That was incredible. That was amazing. I love that. And then even one of my other moments that I loved with, with Vegeta was when he was Majin Vegeta and he starts to explain to Goku in the World Tournament era with Supreme Kai and Gohan sitting there, he explains to him why he's so angry. And that was a really touching moment because you kind of feel for the guy. He's always overshadowed by Goku so much even though he has trained so hard. He just has to deal with the fact that Goku is always a step ahead. And that just eats at him every day. And it was in that scene that you see why he's so angry. You begin to understand a little bit more. And then when they get into that huge battle with Goku and Vegeta fighting Ma when he in both in Super Saiyan 2, incredible, incredible fight. It was amazing to see that. And then seeing him come back, get revived, to fight Kid Buu was incredible. I loved it. That was insane. Overall, Dragon Ball Z is a great series. The Saiyan Saga was fantastic. Great build-up. The Frieza Saga was fantastic. Also very good. The Android Saga was great because, granted, there were so plot holes because of, well, when you introduce time travel, it's gonna happen. But you know what? It was still fantastic. Getting introduced to future Trunks and seeing his storyline develop was insanity. That was awesome. Seeing that was incredible, man. And then, when we finally get to see the arc with Super Saiyan 2 Gohan taking down Cell, incredible. Then we got the Majin Buu Saga, which like I said, it doesn't live up as much. Granted, the beginning of the show was a little like, it, was, it reminded me of Dragon Ball, the original, with like the lightheartedness, the happiness, and like not that many big, big fight scenes going on. Just a lot of funny little stuff. Granted, I don't really like Saiyan Man, but you know what, I was like, whatever, it's silly, it made me laugh as a kid, I was happy. And then we meet Boo, and we see him, and then we see the story arc behind all that. It just kind of... Uh, the writing wasn't my favorite throughout the entire Boo saga. Not my favorite thing in the world. But you know what? There were some highlights. We had the fusion technique get introduced, where Goten and Trunks turned into Gotenks. And then we had the Batara earrings, where Vegito... Vegito, the combination of Goku and Vegeta, we had never knew that that was possible. We were like, dude, imagine if those two fused and turned into an ultimate warrior. That was incredible, and they were fighting uh, Super Buu fused with Gohan. That was insane. Just seeing Super Vegito pop up, great. And then the final grand finale between Goku and Vegeta and Kid Buu on the Supreme Kai's planet was insane. The action in that was incredible and it led to an amazing climax that I still love to this very day. And then it ended on a nice heartfelt note and there you go. Guys, Dragon Ball Z is one of my favorite animes. I love it, I'm passionate about it. I've played most of the games. That's why I'm so pumped about Dragon Ball Fighters getting that collector's edition. I'll be doing an unboxing video for that by the way. So, at the end of the day, I think if I were to give Dragon Ball Z overall a rating, I would have to say it gets a solid A from me. Dragon Ball Z was fantastic. It just, towards the Majin Buu Saga, it was a little bit not as good. It was, it was uh, a little bit of a letdown, but you know what? Even with those flaws, it still deserves that solid A from me. I loved it. Guys, I'm sure you guys watch Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Super. Tell me what your opinions are. How much do you love Dragon Ball Z? Is it your favorite? Is it not your favorite? What do you think of Super right now? What did you think of Dragon Ball? What did you think of even GT? Let's make a Dragon Ball conversation, guys, because I'm passionate about this. So, thank you so much for watching, guys. I do not know if I'm going to be able to see Insidious this week because the weather is not really that great on Thursday. So I do not know, guys. I'm sorry, which is why I wanted to bring out my Dragon Ball Z video a little bit early to give you guys something to watch this week. But as always, thank you so much for watching, guys, and have a great day.